The Hall Effect. Something about magnets and current, right? Well, yes, the Hall Effect does have a lot to do with magnetic fields and electrical current. The Oxford Dictionary has this to say. The production of a potential difference across an electrical conductor when a magnetic field is applied in a direction perpendicular to that of the flow of current. Uh, yeah. But in case you didn't catch all that, I'm going to take a minute to break it down for you. And we'll begin 150 years ago. So back in the day, electricity and magnetism were originally thought to be two separate forces. A relationship was observed between the two forces by many brilliant physicists like Faraday, Ampere and Ersted. However, it was James Clerk Maxwell in 1873 who described the union of these forces which we call electromagnetism. He showed that a moving electric charge creates a magnetic field. We use this extensively today usually to convert electrical charge into mechanical motion using magnetics. This includes electrical motors, servos and solenoids, relays and contactors, loudspeakers and earphones, and in many other ways. The majority of electronic devices make use of this conversion of forces. Now let's fast forward six years and introduce Edwin Herbert Hall. Hall was an American physicist who discovered the Hall effect and is obviously its namesake. He made this discovery in 1879 while working on his PhD at Johns Hopkins University. That's just six years after Maxwell figured out electromagnetism. So what exactly did he discover? I'm going to do a quick drawing to explain how a Hall effect sensor works and the most important part of that is the element. So I'm going to draw here a square. Now this is a little perspective square like that and we need a current source we need to pass current through this element for us to observe the Hall effect today our current source is just going to be just a simple uh, AA battery so I'll just write uh, battery there we've got a positive and negative terminal now we're going to connect our element up from one side to positive and the other side of the element we're going to connect to the negative conventionally current flows from positive to negative but in actual fact the electrons flow from the negative side back to the positive. So they're going to come out this direction. They're going to flow across this element like this, nice and straight. And they're then going to flow back into the positive side of the battery to complete our circuit. Now remember the Hall effect definition was the production of a potential difference perpendicular to the flow of current. So the flow of current with these red lines here is flowing in this direction. So if we go perpendicular to that, we need to measure from this side of the element to this side of the element. Now I'm just going to call this VH1 or voltage hall 1 and VH2 for voltage hall 2. So if we measured across that element right now, we would measure 0 volts difference. There's going to be no difference from, from one side to the other. Now what Edwin Hall discovered is if a magnetic field passed through this element, things change. So I'm going to draw the magnet up here like this and we're going to say that this is our north pole of a magnet and then we're going to put another magnet down here and we're going to say that this is south so our magnetic field is passing from the north through the element to the south and what Edwin Hall measured is this I'm just going to clear out these lines what happens is we the path of the electrons through this element starts to curve it gets pulled to one side and it causes bunching of the electrons on one side of the element here and a bit of a void on the other side. So this is now going to cause VH1 to be negative and VH2 to be positive when they're measured across this element. So you can see that the magnetic field passing through has caused a potential difference perpendicular to the current flow. Now if we were to change this magnetic field and reverse it, so I'm going to take out this magnetic field here and we're now going to make this bottom one north and we're going to make the top one here south and our magnetic field is going to flow in this direction and what we'll now see is that the exact opposite happens so our electrons are now going to flow like this across the element, they get curved around we get a bunching up of electrons on this side we get a bit of a void happening on this side and so now our VH1 is positive our VH2 is negative in respect to each other and the same thing happens if you reverse this battery so if we swung this battery around and put positive here and negative here 
the same thing happens. It reverses the flow of current across across the element here. So that, in a nutshell, is the Hall effect. So basically, this is exactly what you're going to find inside of a Hall effect sensor, the little three-lead transistor types or the little IC packages. If I draw the circuit symbol for a Hall effect sensor or element, it looks like that. And if we put our current going through this, they take the voltage across the element and they put it through an amplifier. And then you're basically reading this here as an analog output. Um, there's also other types where it's just on or off, and they basically have the same arrangement, but they um, they put it through a shock key diode of some sort, um, and then you basically get like a fully on or fully off signal if in the presence of a uh, magnetic field. And that's basically it. That's the whole effect. Um, I hope you learned something there. Please give us a thumbs up, and uh, subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Thanks very much.